Hi, this is CF Liu again over here. Now in today's uh, video, today's lesson, I want you and I to really go through this uh, one another episode of what we call as the uh, dissecting a read uh, annual report. Okay, dissecting a read annual report. And the read that I really want to dissect today with you together is Hectare Read. Hectare Real Estate Investment Trust Annual Report 2018. Now, when I when I'm dissecting this annual report, I make of course make this bookmark uh, some some of the pages which is important. Now, ov obviously we cannot just sit here whole day and you know read the whole entire annual report of this real estate investment trust. But what I can show you is just to skip to the sections, uh, uh, like always that. I think it is this is more most important for you as an investor, uh, whether you are invested already in it in this uh, any REIT uh, real estate investment trust or you have not invested, you are very new. This is still a step by step instruction that uh, I hope to give you an overall picture of how everything works. So before we actually jump to to this, uh, I want to actually uh, switch this uh, screen a bit and uh, show you that there's a few things I think that's pretty important over here is that when we want to dissect the annual report, what are the angles, what are the kind of information that we'll be looking at. So very simple. I think that there's a few, there's no, what we call it, there's no one way, no one correct way to skin a cat, right? To do everything, to do anything. But uh, in this in this episode, in this lesson, I'm going to just focus on the approach, what we call it, a SWOT approach, the strength, weakness, opportunity, and threats approach. And of course, there's another one, another thing to it is what we call a significant event when it comes to uh, 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 annual report, reading the annual report, because there's any significant events, uh, the read manager or any public listed company, they are obligated to actually disclose that. So for hectare read is a bit special when it comes to this significant event. Uh, you you stay until the end and you you actually know what I I really uh I'm referring to. So let's just switch this back and uh, you know jump right back into our uh, annual report over here. Now any comments below and whatnot? Um, you can leave your comments below as always and. Uh, you know hit like uh, if you haven't subscribed click on subscribe button uh, at the bottom uh, lower right hand corner uh, if you after this lesson you feel this helpful uh, give me a like and uh, perhaps you want to subscribe to this channel for more lessons like this so let's get right into uh, here uh, you know as I go through this you, 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 you just you know anything that is unclear just type in leave me a comment below so the first page that we really want to jump into is you know of course the first page right there's nothing much over here just an introduction but let's say if I were to jump to um, this page okay now as the, in, in the first few pages now in this case the third the third pages page number three it always shows you what is the uh, so-called uh, the the pot property portfolio of this uh, real estate investment trust uh, you can see that uh, for hectare it owns uh, normally for a very good read annual report they will actually have a visual representation of what are the buildings or the commercial real estate that is hold under their portfolio for hectare read it owns six neighborhood shopping center throughout peninsula malaysia so you see that these are the names uh, they are different different names and you know that they have this uh, they are a player when it comes to neighborhood malls they are not uh, a, a, a re they are retail read a retail malls read but they don't they are not the the read uh, unlike like uh, mid valley and pavilion so these are in the right like, city center so re hectare read focus on uh, these uh, uh, properties or retail shopping malls that is in in not not exactly in the outskirts but in what we call as a neighborhood for example you know it's not in the city center like KLCC or you know in the middle of Petaling Jaya but more like uh, a bit uh, out from the city like 20 30 kilometers like you know like Subang and in this case there are some even there are some of the shopping malls in let's say uh, in towns like Kulim Keda right so Kulim Keda you know that it's quite impossible to have like a uh, full flash 
shopping mall as big as pavilion where they sell sell luxury goods and all that because the community over there they just don't need that they just need some more with cinemas and maybe with some activity center where they can go shopping where there's some you know uh, a, a mix of uh, a good mix of uh things that you can actually eat over there have dinner have lunch uh do maybe some sort of shopping and maybe some uh, family activity as well so hectare actually focus on this niche uh, niche segment okay niche segment so they have malls in sungai petani kulim kedah subang jaya bandar melaka mua johor and also sakamat johor right so this is a visual uh, good shot now snapshot now you know that uh, this is the important thing the next one is about distribution per unit now hectare has been giving uh, quite a uh, quite consistent distribution or dividend uh, uh, per share or per unit uh, from this uh, as you can see that we are we are actually talking about uh, what over here right uh, let's see like 10 10 10 point5 cents per unit right per, per, per share uh, but in financial year 2017 it actually dropped so what happens and then in financial year 2018 it it really actually drops again so really what 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 is uh, happening over here okay so this is only the first level of detail and without you uh, know digging more you might have thought that they have a decreasing uh, dividends per share uh, or per unit or DPU now the thing is if you look at the gross revenue or even the net property income right the net property income actually uh, yeah yeah oh, there is a decrease a slight decrease over here and then there's a slight um uh, decrease over here and then actually this one goes back up when it comes to net property income so what happened right what happened over here now if you are or not already invested you have to know that somewhere around here right you have to also look at this number of units in circulation meaning that the total number of shares that has been issued right uh in the entire market so in uh, prior to 2017 there's about four four hundred thousand of shares in the market in Brusa, malaysia okay that is what you need to know but then in 2017 and 2018 you know that it has uh this four is sixty two thousand more shares uh what happened is that um if i if i remember correctly there has been a, a, a some sort of a, a right issues over here so therefore the number of units uh, per share actually increases therefore uh, this is due to the drop alone because as you can see their their gross revenue actually increases but their net property income actually decreases because of an uh, increase in the property expenses however when you see something like this it did not when it decreased from 10.5 to 9.6 uh, distribution per unit is not entirely due to a reduced um, net property income because the reduction is just very small but it is also because there's an increase uh, in, in terms of the number of units right I mean it is an increased uh, uh, number of units so uh, if you are the existing shareholder so of course on a per unit basis then your dividends uh, your, your dividend per share you actually get what we call as a diluted um, so this is the thing right this is the second level of detail which we teach you in uh, read method reit method of how to see that i mean if you have this coming and you know how to manage accordingly whether you want to actually take when you already invested you want to take the rights issue or not if you don't take of course something will happen if you take then you need additional money but if you were to take this right issue you also have to un you have to understand whether whether this right issue is used to for example buy a new property and how what is the potential of that property to generate more income if not your dividend per share or dpu will actually keep uh lowering lowering down now i'm saying that not specifically for hectare rate, but it's just the thought process that you need to understand when you make a decision whether you know when any public public business company uh, have this uh, rights issue you know of public placement you have to consider all this and it's not by saying that oh this company has is really uh, becoming worse it's because uh, the di dividend per share actually dropped no you also have to see whether there is any private or public placement in terms of uh, public or private placement even private placement they would have a uh, 
they will have more number of units or shares in the market and that is causing on a per dividend per share basis drop now i hope i can actually explain this more but um due to the constraint of time and that we have a lot of cover in this lesson uh, i suggest you if you really want to learn this you know we explain that in uh, reit readmethod.com is a course that uh, specifically teach you on how to uh, uh, invest into read so you might want to actually you know just uh, look at wherever the, the words over here in below this video and just go to there after you finish this lesson of course and sign up for upcoming web class and moving on um, you can see that this is uh, something a discount discount giving a discount to NAV now um, net asset value premium discount you know that this is a method uh, a way to actually have a gauge not the only way but one of the way to actually uh, have a gauge to say whether this uh, real estate investment trust or any public company right or any fund is undervalued or overvalued so these are the important details to look at now moving on uh, you can see that this is the DPU now the, the reason I highlight this right maybe I guess I uh, want to actually uh, zoom this in a bit the reason i highlight this is not to take this too literally uh because the or the, the the dpu the or dividend yield is actually taken uh based on a, a date that is picked by the annual by the read manager to compute this for example this is normally a unit closing by 1.11 is normally at the at last trading uh, last trading day of the year so what you want to do is that you have to take the your dpu amount and you just divide that by you know um whatever price that you currently want to buy into not by looking at this alone because this changes all the time and it doesn't make sense to just take this value as it is uh and if you look at this distribution you um again i will actually not take this literally you have to understand that um whether this can this this state this actually is not a, a a number that will stay forever because it depends on the stock price and it depends on whether you know the, the dividend distribution per unit or dpu or dividend per share is going to increase or decrease but still it is just to give you a good perspective of they are actually comparing the distribution yield or dividend yield with epf dividend you know and 10 years mgs bond and 12 month deposit now uh, in normal circumstances you do not really want to compare you know i mean you want to compare to epf but it's not um let's say for a, a, a unit trust agent what well, i know that if you are promoting a unit trust fund and you compare that with epf dividend just so that you uh, ask people to get withdraw money from epf and invest into unit trust fund uh, that is totally uh, uh against uh, i mean e e epf will actually uh, take action against you so you do not want to actually compare it with epf now this is a different monster altogether right because epf is a big fund right uh, we are talking about entirely different thing over here but still when it comes to annual report for a, a, a real asset investment trust well it, they can actually do this without you know much issue so uh, the other thing uh, we, we we also have to understand is the gearing ratio because as as many a lot of business including real estate investment trust they do borrow money they do borrow money to um, to invest in this uh, property although they are not developing they are not property developer uh, they are they are actually borrowing money to run their day-to-day -day operation uh, to actually um, buy new rental property and all that to do uh, you know renovation to make the property can generate more income but still they need to borrow money and this is uh, it, the limit is about 50 percent I mean out of their property value so you know that uh, this this one is something uh, if they were to expand and all that then you know that this limited expandability uh, just by organic expansion because you know that the gearing is always always hitting uh, already hitting the limit you know that you cannot be over gear right if you over gear then you, 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 your financial standing become very you know dangerous and all that and that's apply for uh, other business as well so average total return you might see that okay what is the average total return and annualized total return what is the difference now the different average is just a simple total return you just take a uh, take a total with total uh, so-called uh, total return in terms of dividend yield dividend return and maybe capital gain that's divided by five but annualized return it takes into account the compounding effect okay you get what i mean compounding effect so the more accurate thing to look at is actually annualized return because there's a compounding effect into it okay 
uh, if you do not know what this compounding effect, don't know what I'm talking about, I mean, maybe I'm gonna leave a comment below, you know, maybe one of my team or my, even myself will get to it and explain that to you. But so again, this, these two, they just take, take it like a grain of salt. Do not be too, uh, 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 too like fixated on this figure just as uh, for your reference only. Uh, but again, this is still good because it says that for in 2018, the average, uh, uh, average, uh, the index, you know, 2018 was one of the worst years for stock market since the economic crash in 2008-2009. So even Busan Malaysia was minus 5, minus 6%. So read index as a whole minus 6% and, uh, you know, they just give you some extra information just so that you know. Uh, annual return of course over here and you see the annual return is 0.8% what happened is I think uh, the why 0.8% doesn't mean that it gives you no return because the dividend yield is still about 8.1 right according to, 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 to even what we have seen just now right here so if you look at here then you say like oh why, why this 0.8 well very simple because if there is a price uh, capital depreciation or meaning the, the stock price drop but still there is a dividend yield return uh, over the entire land let's just assume it's like you know like 8.8.1 percent or something so it actually covers up each other so uh basically your 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 total uh return is actually almost like break even so you, you what i'm trying to say over here is that when the price of a stock in for example a read right you actually drop well you lose money you have paper loss but if this stock or this company actually give you dividend now that can actually cover back so uh you know even though it's a paper loss but what the dividend you get is a hard cold cash money that actually uh being uh, uh transferred or credited into your bank account so they are uh, this figure actually just means that so again don't take this too literally um same like the dividend yield right because when you what you want to buy how you actually calculate the return what is the really cash flow this is where we actually uh teach you how to really structure a portfolio so you have a consistent cash flow from a real estate investment trust portfolio but by not only depending or looking solely at this information alone because this information alone you have to understand the annual report what is in there is just a snapshot of what it is at this point of time it it does not represent you know this fact is true forever it doesn't mean that this is fake it just means that you know when they come up with an annual report they have to take a snapshot of the price or what is at that moment of time and calculate you know things like a dividend yield and things like what's the annual return for that year considering that moment so this you have to understand right and the second thing is uh now i always like to read this uh so-called uh the letter of the ceo or the chairman to shareholders you can really get a lot of insight just by reading some of your comments now i'm going to zoom this in and you uh, know uh let you know like this one like the past year has been one of challenging uh challenges and renewal in previous report i mentioned the hexagon the process of adaptation now what what, what do we do they mean by that now very interesting now i don't want to really spend time going through each and every word that's why i already pre-prepared this uh these I will highlight these are the important parts of this uh chairman or ceo statement uh, this uh, market shift, you know, in the government policy, of course, there's a change of government, right? So, you know, Pakatan Harapan government saw the swift removal of much mal maligned good and GST. Now, it, this is very quite funny because if GST is still, of course, it's still, uh, you know, still, uh, it still exists, right? You know, the SST itself and, you know, service tax already replaced GST at, at, the, at, at this point of time in 2018. But, Imagine if GST is still uh, is still there, this statement would not exist, right? You know, and this is what we call actually much much malign is like you know mal mal malign. I'm not sure how we pronounce that, but it's like malignant is something that is like cancerous or you know tumor that is cancerous. So this is actually a very strong word, and it gets me actually it gets me cracking uh, because 
you know this 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 is the word I I I I, I would uh, when I first read that I was like laughing I say like no way I mean if GST is still you know this is almost like literally translated is a much hated right like this this word right a very strong word which means that you you don't like that so imagine if GST is still you know in place so impossible this 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 statement will actually come uh, and not for a public sector company but. Anyway, so this is uh, we digress a bit over there, but um, you know the right location, how uh, you know the principle of a retail read or retail much the right location, right sizing and tenant mix. Now, like I say, their concept was like the only mall in town, the leading malls in town, meaning that they go to places where it's not really big cities, but in cities whereby uh relatively smaller to uh, compared to big cities, and then even a medium sized mall or a small mall. A small retail mall, shopping mall. When you put this kind of mall into a city center, it will not do too well because it actually dwarf in comparison, uh, in comparison to uh, what is available in big cities, right? But if you put the same kind of mall in c smaller city like you know Kulim, Taiping, and all that, then it become like you know the 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 the, the only attraction, the biggest mall in place. It's same like you know in the city center if you are you are a general practitioner as a doctor you know uh probably there's a lot of competition in the city center but if you go to a smaller town where you are the only clinic in a small town then you would have a better business rather than if you were to open your clinic in in the city center okay I, again this is uh this is another analogy that i want i i i, I mean you probably you can relate to right so uh what it says that it focus like on primary catchment area 15 minutes drive to attract the necessary traffic so for example you live in subang you want to buy something you know just a grocery there's no point for you to actually drive all the way just to go to mid valley right you go to mid valley just for an entertainment maybe watch movies on the weekend but if you just want to make a quick trip then you know you would go to the nearest mall that can you know get you the things that you want so hectare rate is a retail rate or retail mall that actually cater for this kind of market okay so uh just uh, uh uh moving on over here now this uh Makota parade again it has a long history in Makota parade i was i used to be studying uh in my uh, undergraduate days in malacca so this was uh, probably the only mall in malacca that you know everybody you know the only cinema at that time so uh but it's not as popular as it, i think it were compared back in the days but still uh, the uh, most enjoy domestic international traffic, enjoy rental reversion, or blah 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 blah, blah and all that. Um, so okay, this 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 part, uh, hectare un unknowingly to me until I read this report, they also have a mall which is in Johor, which a hotel, which a hot with one of the business card hotel attached attached next to the shopping mall, uh, which they acquire I think in twenty seventeen. Um, so uh, apparently after the lease expire, the hotel management, they don't want to manage that hotel anymore. Uh, so Hectare actually bought, bought over like something like bought over or they are actually transferring like the ownership so that it was. So Hectare o now also have like part of it is like hotel properties over here. Okay. Central Square leading one, so Sungai Petani as you know. Uh, then in Kulim Central, Kulim they have a... Uh, they are probably the only that like top one more in Kulim Kedah, what we call the Kulim Central. So they have they are serving this uh, niche market. Now imagine if in in in, in places like Kulim when you have Starbucks and Texas Chicken, that is going to appeal to the residents over there, right? Okay, Sagamat Central, the 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 other temple of the new exciting middle class brand. Okay, moving on. And okay, what else? No, I think I think we are good on this. Uh, we are also good on this and I think we are also good on this so all right okay so we are coming to here I'm going to zoom this in so that you can see this uh, better um, so the they say financial review in 2018 the major contribution and it was the Gamma Central and I, uh, of course uh, it's self-explanatory is it's a, it's a more in Sagama. Uh, Johor. Uh, but why they say the new contribution in 2018 because they acquired this one in 2017. However, in 2017, you know, a new property does not really go through the 
full financial year, which is a 12 month of financial year. Uh, therefore, what they are really saying is that basically uh, the full contribution of this Gamat Central was only seen uh, in uh, this 2018. And uh, which is why if we backtrack a bit, uh, we backtrack a bit over here, uh, why over here in financial year, you know, here, I mean, the property, net property income actually dropped over here, right? In financial year 2017, where they acquired a new mall, and probably uh, that that is where the expenses go up, but the income has not been fully accounted for yet. Only in the whole entire financial year 2018, the full the full revenue from that new mall, which is acquired in 2017, has been has been uh, uh, fully uh, uh, fully accounted for. Which is why you see there's a height, you know, height like increase back in the terms of the. Uh, yeah, net property income over here okay net property income so coming on to this part and uh, the gamma central including energy efficiency so they are actually trying to reduce expenses uh, electricity is a huge expense when it comes to shopping mall uh, moving on to here uh, what they are saying that with opportunity acquisition target with uh, what they are what they are targeting to do is that they want to acquire Asset which are underserving their market and provide hack the read with the opportunity to improve the mall via asset enhancement for the for, for the read uh, the property under the real estate investment trust right they will also acquire you know, a mature property with a strong captive market now this may be a bit harder but I think this will be like they, they know how to spot the opportunity there for example like in Sagama you know like uh, Moa and all that for their malls so moving on to next one is uh, you know that this is one of their malls in 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 Subang and uh, okay, so okay hold on to this and this is a good snapshot of how their property performing. Now you know that this is this is actually relatively new. They acquired in twenty seventeen and then in twenty eighteen they have a full contribution revenue from that, but then um they really have not reached its potential yet because evidently the occupancy is less than eighty percent for a shopping mall that is really not a not a not a good thing uh for subang parade you have to see there's a decreased occupancy for a shopping mall i think uh, uh generally for a read for a shopping mall under a real estate investment trust or a read uh basically whatever is over 90 percent or even 95 percent that is actually considered healthy so there's a lot of improvement that can be done over here and uh he also you know when it comes to shopping mall uh, the read manager also always want to talk about what the visitor traffic you know it's like more people come to the mall i mean you need people to come first right? whether they buy something or not is another matter but at least you need the people to come first so visits to green central have increased tremendously like coolim they have really done a lot of things like increased by 81 percent right uh, after uh, after they acquire and do some you know, renovation refurbishment and all that and bring in the right what we call as a tenancy remixing the right tenant you know you sometimes you have to have that tenant that attracts the crowd in like for example like starbucks uh new thing like you know korean chicken some korean chicken and all that because once you are there that is where the opportunity opens up for the people or the visitor to a mall to actually go to other shops as well and buy this and buy that right so you see that uh, in Subang Parade, the change of their traffic is actually decreased by a lot. So for if you ask me, this is actually a bit of a concerning. But in Kulim Central, you know that a mall that is located in you know smaller town actually perform much more. Okay, in in uh, in 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 what in uh, in terms of visitor traffic in 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 terms of better than a mall that's located in let's say for Selangor, even though on the absolute amount you are seeing that in millions of people the subang mall is actually higher but when it comes to um when it comes to this uh, absolute amount of course the cooling center is higher but when it comes to the increase right you see that when it comes to the increase in the shopper traffic there is a lot of increase of 81 percent compared to 2017 for this mall and then there's even this central square is a change of traffic of 18 now the other was actually a bit of a decreasing so this was especially this one was a bit of um, you know if you ask me a bit of a concern and potency uh, portfolio tenancy makes you know that always fashion and footwear 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 is the one that contribute 
uh, the largest rental uh, as well as food and beverage segment uh, they contain more than half now this is very normal there's no outlier over here department store even though they occupy the largest uh, so-called uh, letterable area but department store and supermarket are not the major contributor the major contributor is always about the fashion and footwear and all those accessory shops and all that so moving on we have already covered this and one of the next important thing is over here now I like the fact that okay hold on I like the fact over here that Subang Parade, they are actually in planning. The last refurbishment of 20 was about more than 10 years ago. So they, they, they are in planning to actually refurbish and do some tenant remixing as you can see over here because why they want to do that now, even the read manager know that they are not sitting complacent and let the uh, occupancy drop and also the visitor traffic drop. So they are doing something to actually boost that up so that is good right that is good i'm not saying that the figure just now the decrease is good but at least they are actually saying that well well we are actually doing something to actually improve that okay so business is always like that right there's no you don't sit complacent on one thing you you have to, to keep on have an improvement now this is the 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 what that i'm talking about over here uh with with tax parade of course i've never been to this mall um in business joho is too far for me uh, it's in mua joho and it's one of the leading mall in mua joho which is you know a relatively smaller town not too small but i mean uh, compared to kl and jb and all that so this, this is what we call a classic hotel the hotel adjoining with tax parade is one of the largest hotel with largest ballroom facility in mua Hector has recently taken over the management of the hotel upon the expiry of lease with the previous operator blah 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 they already refurbished that and then they reopening for business so you know that this now Hector is also a hotel a hospitality player uh, it's not only a, a pure retail player right uh, classic hotel as you can see there's some more details over here um, you know that I've highlighted which is interesting right uh, which is interesting um what else um the other thing is this central square most established retail in sungai Petani is considered one of the most recognized landmarks in the town central square was acquired by hector in 2012 right okay now i actually want to actually trace back and uh maybe show you there's some typo error in uh, in terms of this uh, hectare read annual report now if you happen to be hectare read uh, management and you look at this video and you know um i i guess make sure you yeah, you want to like correct some of this or proofread this and the the report the annual report error that i'm i'm looking at is actually here as you can see that when they say annualized total return for 10 years they say 2019 to 2018 what's this it doesn't really make sense right so i think what they mean is 2009 2009 to 2018 so this is a typo error right so you look at this 2016 to 2018 right three years this is correct this is correct but this is wrong so i mean just uh you know some typo error over here don't be confused and uh, next one what else uh, Kulim Central the only shopping mall in Kulim you can see that they are really have this uh, major major uh, traffic over here uh, okay so what well, acquired a hectare read so there's only cinema in Kulim Island, uh, only cinema in Kulim so there's only cinema so people will actually go there so so far um just want to jump right back into here right uh jump right back into here so what we what we know so far about the strength weakness opportunity and threats when it comes to uh this uh hectare now the strength is they are very focused they are very focused on you know like small medium towns they don't want this is their focus their niche uh, in what they call neighborhood mall not like the premium mall biggest mall in the city center which is you know which is this is what so you always want to focus on the niche you don't want to play a battle that you cannot cannot win okay of course the weakness is that um for their for their smaller malls they have a lot of growth and growth in visitor traffic and a lot of potential prospect uh that people will become like a center of attention so like imagine if you are the best student in your town you become the center of attention but once 
you are the best student uh, no not the best uh, the best student and you go to you know ha have harvard or oxford to study well you likely are not the best student anymore because the best student from all around the world congregate in that area so this is their weakness and this is what we see in the decreasing visitor traffic and come to their summer shopping mall uh, in this uh, KL right in KL like Subang Parade and all that right because there are so many so uh, people have choices when you don't have choices then you basically become the best right and it's like a beauty pageant right like you know like Miss Malaysia and all that you can be Miss Malaysia then when you go for international level uh, maybe you are not even a top 10 for example right for example so their weakness is actually um they, they 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 have to hard they find it hard to compete against this and then also when it comes to this uh opportunity now there's a lot of uh um so-called opportunity in terms of their smaller malls uh, uh to expand right to actually do a lot of expansion you know in visitor traffic you know tenant remixing and bring in more people and there's this one more they actually generate like 81 percent increase in terms of visitor traffic just year by year growth uh, there is a lot of opportunity over there if they can actually leverage it this strategy to the other malls especially i think on the newer mall acquired the sagama central i think that will be excellent the threat uh, of course there's a lot of threat for example uh, in increasing interest rate there's a threat for every rate manager uh, especially if you're on a floating rate and uh, the, it is also a threat from this uh, e-commerce you know e-commerce and you know that visitor traffic has decreased one of the thing is people don't go to shopping mall to buy things anymore it just you have to configure in a, in a sense that it also attract the crowd to, for family event uh, or for for other things like you know food for the food for the entertainment as well no longer a purely place to actually you know have your eat if have your meals and all that so uh, that being said the significant